I'm back with another album review. And uh, today's review is on The Color and the Shape from Foo Fighters. It's the second studio album from Foo Fighters. And it, and it serves as a follow up to their self titled debut album, which I reviewed last time. Now, the first album essentially served as a demo and had Dave Grohl doing all the instrumentals himself, with the exception of the song Ecstatic. In order to complete the band's lineup, he brought in Pat Smear as the lead guitarist, Nate Mandel as the bassist, and William Goldsmith as the drummer. However, however most of the material with, with William had it re-recorded with Dave taking his place on drums. William was angered by this, and he left the band shortly afterwards. You know, they later got Taylor Hawkins to replace him, but I'll talk about that next time. Selma was recorded between uh, November of 96 and February of 97 at three different studios. Bear Creek in Woodinville, Washington, WGNS in Washington, D.C., and Grandmaster Recorders in Hollywood. Selma was produced by Gil Norton, who has also worked with the Pixies and Catherine Wheel, among other bands. And the album was released on May 20th, 97, under Roswell Records and Capitol Records. Sound was known for containing elements of grunge, post-grunge, hard rock, and alternative rock. Where in line, the lyrics were primarily inspired by Dave Grohl's divorce from photographer Jennifer Youngblood in 96. Some people have described this album as being, being more musically developed than Foo Fighters' debut album. I was aware that the track listing is, is meant to resemble a therapy session. And now to discuss the songs. The album starts with Doll, which is about the fear of entering situations with zero preparation. Now, the next song is called Monkey Wrench, which serves as the lead single. Now, the single was released on April, tw at April 28, 97, which was less than a month before the album was released. Now, Dave Grohl said that the song is about the listener realizing they are the source of all the problems in a relationship that they love the other person very much and wants to be free of the situation, which is themselves. The song also contains elements of power punk. You know, the song received a music video that was actually directed by Dave himself. You know, the video also, also features Taylor Hawkins on drums, even though the actual track has Dave on drums. And I'll post a link to the video in the description. It's also the very first Foo Fire song I ever listened to. I was hooked after hearing it the first time. After that is Hey Johnny Park. Now, the lyrics of this song in particular follow 15 different themes, according to Dave. I'd also like to point out that Johnny Park is also one, of, also uh, the name of one of Dave's childhood friends. The next song, My Poor Brain, is known for experimenting with different, with different dynamics in terms of lyrics and nature. Dave even knows the sound changes from sounding like Jackson 5 to Black Sabbath. And so that is Wind Up. Dave even described the song's concept as being about successful musicians who are constantly complaining about their lives to the press. Up in arms after that, and Dave described the song as being a typical love song. The next song is My Hero, which was released as a single on January 19th, 98. You know, what's special about this song is that although it was released in 97, it was performed as early as 95. They've actually said that he dedicated the song to ordinary everyday heroes. The song has received a music video that Dave directed, and I'll post a link in the description. After that is See You. I'd like to point out that the song features hand claps from Lance Bangs, uh, Chris Billheimer, and Ryan Bosch. No, most, most people, including myself, know Lance Bang says uh, best for being one of the guys from, as uh, being one of the camera guys for Jackass. Uh, it's followed up by Enough Space, which is about, about the, the movie Air, Arizona Dream, which is one of Dave Grohl's favorite movies, even though I've never seen it. After that is February Stars, and the song in particular dates back to 94 during Nirvana's final session. And the early version featured Chris Novoselic on the pipe on the, the pump organ. The next song is Everlong, which was released as a single on uh, August 18th, 97. This is one of the most popular songs from Foo Fighters, and it features backing vocals from Louise Post, though she's uncredited. Now, the song received a music video as directed by, by Michael Gondry. No, I'll post a link in the description. Now, when I saw Foo Fighters back in April of 2018, 
Yeah, this was the last song that they played that night. That was followed up by Walking After You. The song is actually written by Dave in a, in a studio in Washington. There was a different version of it recorded for the soundtrack for The X-Files, and that version ended up being released as a single. And the song also got a music video that was directed by Matthew Rolston, and I'll post a link in the description. Yeah, the last song is called New Way Home. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is that the 10th anniversary edition of this album has six bonus tracks. First, you know, the first is Requiem, which is a cover of a song from Killing Joke. After that is Drive Me Wild, which is a Vanity Six cover. And there's Down the Park, which is a Gary Newman cover. And there's Baker Street, which is uh, it's a Jerry uh, Rafferty cover. And there's Dear Lover and The Color and the Shape, which are both B-sides. And as you can see, the, no, none of those songs are on this version of the album. And I read online that this, this album was met with mostly positive reviews from critics. And rightfully so. So it ended up selling over 2 million copies, which led to it being certified platinum by the Corning Industry Association of America. In many ways, I feel that Blue Fires did some did things better with this album than they did with the first album, and I recommend it. That's all I have to say on this album. If you like the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And be sure to hit the notification bell to be notify of future uploads. You can also follow me on social media, and there's links in the description. And leave a comment if you like. And it's watching you. And I'll be back on Wednesday with another review.